I hope everyone's doing well today. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. Here in this video, we're applying this theorem of Pappas. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Anyhow, we're applying that theorem to the development of the volume of a cylinder. I have the equations here for the x and the y value of a centroid. You know that. I also have the basic definition of the theorem where you are taking a certain area and rotating it around a certain distance area times that distance a region of space times a distance that distance can be 2 pi the x value of that centroid or 2 pi the y value of that centroid if you have a vertical line of rotation you will be looking across in an x dimension therefore you will use this if you have a horizontal line of rotation you're looking upwards with regards to that line of rotation towards a certain function in the y direction so you'll be using the y value of your centroid when we're looking here at the cylinder how can everything get started how about like this x and y axis i have here x equals r i have y equals h we can make this lower case so it looks clear this is the region and there's a certain centroid a center of mass you know it's going to be here but we know very well what it will be without even calculations how do we know that because everything is straight parallel lines a rectangle you would essentially be looking at midpoints it would be r over 2 comma h over 2 is exactly what it would be but if you wanted to figure it out by means of calculation you'd have to run through that formula the area of this rectangular region would be r h area would be r h just like length times width the x value you would determine as 1 over r h then you're looking here along the x limits is 0 to r x times f of x what's your f of x y equals h and that's what it is dx run this through what are you going to get h can come out h over r h the antiderivative of x x squared over 2 everything from r and 0 plug away what will you get these h's here will cancel out you'll have an r squared over 2 r which will be an r over 2 and you know i got an r over 2 already if you want to look at the y value of the centroid it's again 1 over r h again rectangular region length times width r h 0 to r you have a 1 over 2 you can push it on make it 1 over 2 r h the function f of x squared my function is h h squared dx you'll have a h squared over 2 r h all of it getting pushed out 0 to r dx you know you have an x coming here in the antiderivative r and a 0 you can cancel out over here you'll have a h over 2 r when you bring in the antiderivative limits you'll have a h r over 2 r which will be h over 2 your y value and i already have that anyhow we've established this to be the case according to this theorem of Pappas, you have a certain region if it's being rotated around a certain line here my line let it be your y-axis right here with a certain centroid of that region you're going to do this right here a times the distance what's my a over here it's r h this is going to give me the volume here's my a what's my line of rotation it's a vertical so I'll have a 2 pi, I'm looking across towards a certain rectangle that could form a Riemann rectangle and I'm looking at the x dimension, therefore I'm looking at the x value of my centroid. What are these values? R h times 2 pi, my x value was an r over 2. What will happen when you do all of this? This 2 denominator and the numerator 2 will cancel out. What will remain will be a pi r squared h. That would be the volume of a cylinder which would form and you know that's the volume of a cylinder. When you rotate everything, you know you're getting a cylinder. So we've demonstrated this for you. A volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, and we've done it by applying this theorem. This here was everything with regards to a vertical line of rotation or a vertical line of axis. Now consider very quickly a horizontal line of rotation, and I'll just bring that in for completeness sake. I have here a function y equals r. I'm delimiting that by x equals h. You know just by looking at it, you have a 0, 0, h, 0, h, r. Just by looking at it, what are your midpoints? It's the midpoint of this segment, which is an h over 2. And what's the midpoint over here? It's going to be r over 2. This, for a rectangular or a square polygon, will be your centroid. These are your centroid values. Now let's look at our line of rotation, which is horizontal, your x-axis. Horizontal line of rotation. Therefore, I'm looking upwards in the y direction. Therefore, I must use the y value of the centroid. As I've shown you right here, horizontal line of rotation, you use the y value. Volume is equal to the area of this region, which has a certain centroid and which will now rotate around a single line of rotation. What's the area of this region? Again, it's a rectangle, r h, length times width, times 2 pi, which you see right here, 2 pi, and now my y value. 
let's plug away rh times 2 pi my y value here happens to be r over 2 again anyhow you cancel out you have pi r squared h either way you do horizontal or vertical line of rotation either of these scenarios you're still getting pi r squared h which is right you should be getting that no matter what you use for your line of rotation. So we've shown you by means of applying this theorem of Pappas, the volume of a sphere, the volume of a cylinder, what remains next in the future video is for a cone. And then that should be all that we need to do with regards to this theorem. Thank you for watching.